The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... E.G. Marshall. Have you ever noticed, passing a man walking his dog in the street, how much they resemble each other? If you haven't, take a look next time. Somehow the leash becomes a sort of umbilical cord that establishes them as kin. I don't always find the same thing with women, perhaps because I don't always get as far as the other end of the leash. But men, it may be only my fancy... On the other hand, this fancy, in a way, is what this story is about. Hey, whiskey boy, what's the matter? Oh, you, Bishop. It's about time you got here, Bo. I came as fast as I could. Never quite as quick as you, old long nose, always sniffing in the wind. You, 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 Chadsworth, what the devil's the matter with this flea-bitten hound? Smarter than humans, the dog often is, sir. Uh, I'm sorry to bring these tidings, but the squire is... It's not dead. Oh, my God, wouldn't you know that Whiskey would be the first to know? Oh, would he? Who was with him last, Chad? Who, oh, I... Mr. Bishop... By but... heaven, Bishop, you'd better hope two things. What, my loving brother? That father died naturally and that you are not his sole heir. And if I should be? We'll take that up, brother, when we get to it. Our mystery drama, Every Dog Has His Day, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Court Benson. Rokesby Hall is long gone now. Even in the last century, or at least the latter half of it, the great Georgian mansion had fallen into ruin and decay. The broad latticed windows with their diamond-shaped panes broken. The cage work of the upper stories dirty and dilapidated. The somber, lifeless avenue that swept from the coach road under the giant elms to the hall itself, overgrown and choked with weeds. Before the Civil War... It had been one of Virginia's proudest landmarks till the death of the old squire's wife. You might say I came with the foundations of old Rooksby Hall, for on the death of his father, the squire left England behind him and took his new bride to the Americas and built this magnificent old house to welcome her here. Ah, those were the days. Never a one without the carriages passing by and the gentry leaving their cards, the balls, the hunting breakfasts, all the society of the new world I opened that front door for and welcomed in to meet and socialize with the squire and his lovely bride. But with her ladyship's death, it all changed. I remember the night she was buried as well as my own name. Uh, Chadworth, my light has gone out. Mm. Pour yourself a brandy and join me. Oh, me, sir? Oh, God's wounds, man. You're closer to me than all my family. You have your sons? Uh, my sons. Neither of whom could quite break off their own affairs to mourn their mother's death. Bishop, since his province is the field of business, bartering, buying, and selling... And Beauregard, too busy with wine, women, and nothing but debts, which I am heartily sick of paying. Pour that brandy, damn it. At least I won't drink alone. Yes, very well, sir. Now that the gout has hobbled me, damn me if I have a friend left. Saving yourself an old whiskey. Oh. 
<laughs> Best dog I've ever had. The only one left now that I've put by the horses I whiskey boy. <laughs> by my eyes, Chetworth, he has more love and thought for me than either of those ungrateful pups I wept. As of you. Oh, here's looking at you. To your very good health, sir. <laughs> I doubt. I doubt if I have much of that left. <laughs> Well, Squire Rexby, on what the, is it? On the side, more pill, little white pill. Oh, you drink. didn't tell me that Dr. Summers uh, had prescribed for you. Uh, uh, how many, uh, sir? Just one, and get me some more brandy. Uh, no, 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 Squire. You, you've had more than enough of that. Here, here's some water. Water! The man wants to kill me. Oh, the last thing I would do, sir. Oh, no, no. Uh, only two in the world I can trust. You, Chadworth, my old boy there. I didn't know that the master had been seeing a doctor, so I was relieved when the first of his sons, Mr. Bishop, the older one, turned up the next morning. I put the matter of calling the doctor in his hands, but the first person he called wasn't a doctor. But a lawyer, our nearest neighbor, Mr. William Tremaine. Ah, yes, Tremaine, don't try to push me over the edge yet. I'll hang on long enough to get a good long look at both those young jackanapes who can't wait to inherit Rugsby. Bishop is here already, Sam, and anxious to see you. Yes, I can imagine. But first he was careful to let my lawyer in, huh? Now, now, Sam, you mustn't sell your son short. Give them a chance to present their own case. Oh, of course, Mr. Lawyer. They shall have their chance. Is Bo there, too? Why, no, no. We are not sure he's received our messages yet. Why, not even the thought of being able to win your fair Antoinette was enough to coax that rascal back. I cannot answer for my daughter. I'm not sure which of your sons engages her deepest regard. Well, if Bishop is waiting, I suppose I should see him. Sam. May I speak as an old friend? Better speak as my lawyer. You insist on my making a will, right? Why? A matter of form. I I don't take it ill that you have a deep interest in this domain. As long as we both can remember. It was supposed that your daughter would marry one or other of my sons. And you still feel that way. You know that the joining of our two families is the strongest way in this land of savages to ensure that the best oh, of the will spare leaders... me all that. What's important is which of my sons inherits how much and what. Huh? That's what you'd like to have sewed up in a will. As your lawyer, I feel it's what you should have sewed up in a will. Well, I don't. Not till I take one good last measure of my sons. There isn't enough to leave for both. It has to be one or the other. The one who will maintain Rokesby Hall as my wife loved it for as long as anyone can hope. Very well. Still, some sort of doctor. All right, all right. Draw up your documents. And when I meet and judge my sons again... And I shall enter the name of both. Or the one who best deserves it. What the devil is the matter with that dog, Chatsworth? Uh, Mr. Bishop, he misses his master. Being shut away from him, he dotes on the master, does old whiskey. Mm. Only wish he'd be a little less vocal about it. <laughs> Dogs are very strange, you know. Sometimes they have a sixth sense, like... Uh, maybe I'd better go into the squire. Uh, no, don't be ridiculous. My father's perfectly all right. He wanted to rest, and I saw him off to sleep. You wouldn't think he... he might be failing, Mr. Bishop? <laughs> Nonsense. Nothing could kill that old devil. Gout, apoplexy, heart... <laughs> He'd laugh them all off. He just asked me to have you witness this and 
settled off to sleep like a baby. Oh, witness what, sir? Well, his signature, you can see. The ink isn't even dry. Oh, what's the document, Mr. Bishop? Heaven only knows anything from a rent mortgage to his will. Uh, he scribbled his signature and said to have you witness it along with the housekeeper, Mrs. Armbrister. Uh, a little out of order, wouldn't you say, sir? Yeah. <laughs> I would, but then... Since when has my father ever been either orderly or ordinary? Go wake him up and ask him if you want. Oh, I, I wouldn't dream of it. He needs the rest. Yeah. And sign this and get Mrs. Armbrister, too. He particularly wanted it in shape before my brother arrived. Oh, very well. Oh, damn that hound. But go ahead, Chadsworth. Uh, yes, sir. I, I, I will, sir. I suppose I might have questioned things more But the thing is, when you have spent a life in service You don't, normally And it was the master's signature, which I knew well enough So I wrote my own name And got Mrs. Armbrister to add her scroll Little thinking that by doing so I was setting a match to the fuse for the terrible series of explosions to come. Better I had paid attention to Whiskey's warning howls than to the smooth and easy way of Mr. Bishop Worksby, for a storm was on the way in the person of his younger brother, Beauregard. Well, it's about time you got here, Beauregard. Well, the stagecoach was late, Mr. Tremaine. And uh, it isn't that serious with the old boy, is it? Would you care? Well, of course I would, sir. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. For my daughter's sake. I, uh, I guess I'm a little out of my depth, Mr. Tremaine. Well, then let me get you back to shallow water so you can put your feet on the ground. Was there not a kind of understanding between Toinette and you? Oh, yes, sir. Attendant upon my making my way and my fortune. Which I take it you have not yet succeeded in doing. Oh, I have great prospects, sir. Many connections and, uh... Uh... Well, frankly, a lot more debts than I can properly handle. Well, at least you tell the truth. I'll answer in kind. If it weren't for Toinette's feelings, I wouldn't give a tinker's damn about you. If I had my way, I'd rather see her married to your brother. To old Bish, that cold stick? Oh, not really, sir. Now, oh, don't you now really, sir, me. Your father is far from well. He may not recover from his last attacks. I hope for your sake he'll be conscious to give you a chance to renew an acquaintance which should never have been broken off. Well, sir, if I'd had any idea the old man was... If so... you had a brain in your head, you'd have stayed home to help him manage the property. But while you've been having your fling, your brother has had the good sense and the common decency to keep in touch with your father. Since the squire has been sick, he's been with him 24 hours a day. While well, it's taken you the better part of a week to bestir yourself and come home. Mr. Tremaine, what, what are you trying to tell me? I am your father's friend, his lawyer, and a prospective father-in-law to one of his sons. One of us? You can't seriously consider Bishop to... Your brother has been paying considerable attention to Toinette. You may be surprised to discover how she has bloomed in your absence. And you favor his suit? For myself, quite frankly, yes. I have more faith in Bishop's future. I didn't hear Mr. Beauregard come home. The insistent, mournful wail of the hound had sent me running to the squire's room. A dreadful premonition clutching at me. So that when the front door bell rang, for all I hurried with my heart in my mouth, it was Mr. Bishop who got to the door first. Whiskey was all over Mr. Beauregard in a wild kind of desperate greeting, whimpering and snuffling and licking at his hands. And when he saw Mr. Bishop... Hey, Whiskey boy, what's the matter? Oh, you, Bishop. It's about time you got here, Bo. I came as fast as I could. Never quite as quick as you, old long nose, always sniffing in the wind. You, you, you... Chadsworth, what the devil's the matter with this flea-bitten hound? Smarter than humans, a dog often is, sir. Uh, 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 
I'm sorry to bring these tidings, but the squire is, is not dead. Oh, my God, wouldn't you know that Whiskey would be the first to know? Oh, would he? Who was with him last, Chad? Who, uh, Mr. Bishop. By but... heaven, Bishop, you'd better hope two things. What, my loving brother? That father died naturally and that you are not his sole heir. And if I should be? We'll take that up, brother, when we get to it. The two brothers face each other. The kind of raw hatred that can only be bred in family relationships, named and writhing between them. The dog is suddenly silent, his somber brooding eyes measuring them both in turn. Now the brothers, Mr. Tremaine and Chadsby, go into the house, traversing the long hall and climbing the winding staircase to the squire's room. I will return with Act Two in just a moment. When they came upon him in the bedroom... Squire Samuel Rokesby lay half-fallen with the upper part of his body out of the great four-poster. His face was suffused with the livid blood of apoplexy. His hands crooked as if in some great battle against the angel of death. And what was most startling of all, his blue eyes wide, stark, and staring with a kind of terrible accusation. And his death was not an end but a beginning. Whiskey, poor old hound, was the first to announce the death. And outside of myself, as the next days passed, seemingly the only one to mourn the master's passing. By heaven, I'll not suffer it. I'll take it to law. Though I ask you to let us discuss this calmly. Calmly? Calmly, is it? When my father, his face black and his tongue out gasping for air, quite obviously had help in leaving this world? That's quite an accusation. Oh, I do heartily agree. Prove it, brother mine. The proof is on the table there amongst us. Your father's will? My father called me in and signed this document, which proved to be his will at the time. I didn't know what it was. It was sealed with his signet ring. Naming you as sole heir. As you see. Without this will, we would share the inheritance. Isn't that true, Mr. Tremaine? If your father had died in test it, yes. Since it doesn't apply, there's only one will which appears to be valid. Are you satisfied, brother? No. Hey, will you listen to that? I swear by all that's holy, we might all be ashamed. The squire is dead and there's only one who really mourns him. But I warn you one thing, Bishop, if it's the last thing I do... I'll make sure you don't profit from his death. Bo? Yes, Trinette. I wasn't sure you'd be here. I got your message. It seems my brother's has been more urgent during the time I've been absent. I didn't come here to quarrel. Well, no more did I. But what's all this my father tells me about Bishop and you... The families are friends. How would you have me treat him? Like the black snake he is. There are two Rokesby's left, my brother and myself. All right, Toinette, which do you choose? I didn't think your message suggested that this was why I meet you. What did you expect to talk about with a Rokesby? Love instead of hate? I thought the first was all that lay between us. And so did I, till I came home so tardy. You know that I've been disinherited? Well, I... Yes. But it makes no difference to us. Oh, please. It's... Well, it's different now. It isn't when I see you again, Toinette, and touch you. You never wrote. I never write anyone. We thought you were never coming back. We? Fish and... Well, I mean, Daddy and I, and... And Daddy felt that... That I wasn't worth the powder to blow me to hell. You don't have to be so violent. Why not? We're a violent family, Toinette. 
Oh, don't let my brother's cold, tight control blind you to what he really is. Not all the money in the world could bring you a moment's peace with him. That's why I made this tryst. To tell you that he murdered my father. And to ask you to run away with me before it's too late for all of us. Oh, what are you saying? You can't believe that... Well, that Bishop killed you. Of course I do. But prove it. <laughs> Not something else again. So you won't come with me. Oh, be fair. Be reasonable. How can I... All right, forget it, Toinette. You've made your choice. I thought I owed you one last chance. Where are you going? If I can't have you or Rokesby, by heaven, neither will Bishop. Bo? Bo, what are you going to do? Put a bullet in my brother and then another in myself. You're mad. You can't kill Bishop. I will unless he backs down, but you and I are through. All right, get away, boy. Get away. Whiskey, or I'll take my riding crop. Do you... Whiskey. Whiskey, will you let go of the stirrup, brother? Damn you, this horse is skittish enough without... He's rearing. Bo, look out. Oh, no. Bo. Bo. You all right? Uh, uh, no. My, my leg. My back. I think I'm broken. Help. Help. He was in a bad way, the poor young master. His back was broken and his leg. And Lord only knows what damage to his innards from the horse stomping on him. For near a month he lay in a sort of half-world from all the morphine and laudanum for the pain, his wits wandering while his father was buried, and Master Bishop and Miss Antoinette announced their marriage. Mrs. Armbruster, the housekeeper, and I were his only nurses and only companions, save old whiskey who could not be kept out of the room and an occasional visit from Squire Bishop. Well, how's the living corpse today, Chatsworth? About the same, sir. Although he, he does seem a little perkier. Mm, that's dubious news. Oh, good Lord. What's that mangy hound doing in here? We, we can't keep him out of here. Even with the doors and windows closed, he seems to be able to slip through some chink in the wall. So, well, I, I don't know. But he's better here. He keeps him quiet like... Look at him. Look at him curl his lip at me. I don't like the dog any better than he does me. I ought to have you take him to the stables and shoot him. Oh, don't hush now, old boy. Oh, you wouldn't do that, would you, sir? He was your father's boon companion and Get friend. Get him out of here, Chadsworth. I'd like to have a word with my brother. Y yes, very well, sir. Come, come, come on, whiskey. Lad, come on. Come on, old boy. Don't make me drag you. Got to obey the new master, you know. Get him out. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm doing that. There we go. Come on, then. Come on. He... Doesn't like you, Bishop. He has good taste. So, you're back in the land of the living again, hmm? No, I'm not sure. Halfway someplace. Halfway back from where I've been. Hmm? Where have you been? Oh, the other side of the curtain, perhaps. I talked to Father. You... You what? <laughs> That scares you a little, doesn't it, Bishop? <laughs> Why should it? Aren't you afraid he might have told me how, how he died? How he died from apoplexy, congestion of the blood and heart. What else? What my father told me. Would you like to hear? Oh, I have no intention of listening to your delirium and your dreams. Only you're going to, Bishop. Not in my words. But in his, his own words, our father's words, your father's words. No, Bishop. I must wait for Bo to come home. I promised Molly before she died that I would never let Rooksby Hall pass out of our family while I had any control over it. I want to lie beside her in the garden and keep it ours. 
as wrong as it is humanly possible. Oh, God, me with it. Father, you could trust me to see that it stayed in family hands, the family fortune would prosper. I wonder, Bishop, if we all worship different gods than yours is money. If you should die intestate and the inheritance is split between us, the house would have to be sold. No! Yes, face it, Father. One of us must be in charge. Trust me, I'll, I'll take care of Bo. But the purse strings should be in my hand. Here, I have pen and ink. Sign the will. You seem very anxious to help me to the grave. I am anxious to see your affairs in order before you enter it. No, I don't trust you. Oh, my God. You hold back any longer and I will help you to the grave. And make certain that Bo joins you there very shortly. True colors at last. Uh, Make no mistake. I mean what I say. And if I sign, you will keep the hall over and you will provide for Bo. See to it that the servants have a home till they die. And my dog, man's best friend, they say, and at the last it has proved right. Whiskey, <laughs> whiskey. You will protect old whiskey, too. I promise. I promise anything. Only sign. Very well. Give me the pen. You'll need witnesses, you know. Give me the paper. Not to what I am about to do. No, do my time is not yet. Miss, no, no. <laughs> you took the pillow and held it over his face until you choked the life from our father. Good Lord. Every word. Every syllable. How could you know? I told you I'd been beyond the curtain. I talked with father. Well, you'll have no chance to tell anyone else. I'll take care of that now. How will you do it? The same way you did with father? Yes. There's no way to trace it and no one will stop me. It... The dog! How did he get back in here? It doesn't matter. What does matter is he's going to stop you. No, by heaven. Get off my sleeve, whiskey. Let go. I told you he'd stop you. All right. All right, only this time. Next time I'll have a gun. And I'll kill you both. How did I know these things? Because Mr. Beauregard told me. And much, much more. Strange and hard to believe. And not of this world. Curiouser and curiouser, as Alice said of Wonderland, are the turns and twists of this strange, brooding story of a house divided against itself. The disintegration of a family, a dead man, and a faithful dog. I'll return shortly with Act Three. Through the years, King Lear's agonizing cry has echoed to haunt every parent's heart. How sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless child. Certainly, no one could have more cause for lament than the late Squire Rokesby, one of whose sons has already hastened him to the grave, while the other, seeking his own selfish revenge is about the task of raising him from it. We return to learn why, as Chadsworth, the old butler, hurries agitatedly into the room where Beauregard Rokesby lies helpless on the bed. Oh, are you all right, Master Beauregard? What's wrong, Chad? Oh, the, the way your brother went by me down the stairs, his face white and his eyes so wide and blank... I thought perhaps... That I'd followed my father's example and left this baleful world and... No. Not yet, Chad, not quite yet. I, I don't understand. There's so much I don't understand. Whiskey, how did he get back in here? 
Mr. Bishop let him in. Oh, not my brother, never him, the last two. Then how did he get in this room? The door was closed when I left, taking, taking him with me. And it was closed when I returned. And still, he did return. No ordinary dog, wouldn't you say, Chad? I... I want you to leave us alone. There's a lot, I think, to be done, and, and very little time left to do it. Now, Mr. Perricard, the, the doctor... Oh, the said... doctor is long since out of this, as are Miss Toinette, her father. But not quite yet, my brother and myself and my father. Leave us alone a little, please, and trust me when I ring to tell you all that needs to be told. I'll take the dog with me. No. No, leave whiskey behind. Are you sure you're all right, Mr. Beauregard? Right as I'll ever be. Goodbye, Chad. At least for now. Goodbye, sir. I hope you know what's best. I may not. But how about you, Whiskey? Or whoever you are. you'll have to take on faith as well as I can remember it. Some was what I saw and most what I was told. But here's about how it went. What is it, Whiskey Boy? Huh? What? You... You want me to go with you somewhere? You know I can't do that. I, I can't walk. What? All right. If you insist, I'll try. Meanwhile, I was downstairs trying to cope with Mr. Bishop and Mr. and Miss Tremaine who'd come to call. Chadsworth. Chadsworth! Yes, Mr. Bishop. Where is the brandy? Curse it, we're out of brandy. Get some more. Haven't I told you to keep this bar stocked? Uh, begging your pardon, sir. But there's a bottle right here below. Well, give it to me. No, you old fool. I'll open it myself. And then, then get me my shotgun. Your shotgun, sir? I am going to take that mean speckled hound with his long, lugubrious face out to the barn and shoot him. Who is kid? Who is the shotgun? Hey, so treacherous. I don't want to take a chance on missing. And don't worry. I have a handgun to finish him off. But, Mr. Bishop, your father's dog, kid. When I get through with him, he'll be nobody's dog. And, and see who that is. Yes, sir. Oh, I can see by the ring it's Mr. Tremaine and his daughter. Oh, get rid of them. I, I don't want to see them now. And don't worry. I'll handle the guns myself. Good evening, Mr. Tremaine and Miss Antoinette. Tonight is a bad night to be here. Why? Well, miss, it's it's just that things are at sixes and sevens, as you might say. Is Mr. Bell worse? I don't think there's been much change. My daughter and I will wait in the sunroom, Chad. Please inform Mr. Bishop we're here. Yes, sir. I'll do that right away, sir. I don't believe we should have come tonight, Papa. I don't believe that for one moment we should lose touch with the Rokesby family until you're one of them, Antoinette. Daddy, really, must you be so open about it all? Honey, when you're as stretched over a barrel as I am, a person has no shame. Only the determination to survive. And that has to go for both of us. You're not as young as you might be, and I'm so over-invested that I haven't any dowry to offer you. Daddy, it's all right. We'll make out. You can trust me, be sure of that. But, shh. Why, uh, uh, Bishop. Honey, were you just going to pass us right by and pay us no never mind? Well, Nat, forgive me. This is, uh, this is a bad evening. Things are a little out of hand. Is there, uh, anything we can do to help? Oh, I think not, sir. Nothing I can't handle by myself. Well, then, uh, please excuse us, Toinette. You sure there's nothing? I, I mean, it... Is it Beau? Is he worse? Oh, it's not well, my darling, not well. I think he's not long for this world. He's in a wild delirium at the moment. Well, have you sent for the doctor? Yes, yes, and, and for the priest. I, I think he'll need more of the second. And now, uh, please, uh, forgive me, I must attend to my brother. Oh, yes, yes, of course, Bishop, son. Don't worry about us. We can let ourselves out. But 
But I had seen something that the Tremaines had not. The gun that Master Bishop was carrying, hidden inside his coat. And now I stopped him at the foot of the stairs. Out of my way, Chad. No, no, Mr. Bishop, please. In the name of heaven, hasn't enough misfortune come to this house? Leave the poor dog alone. You want to die with him, Chad? And my brother? No, no, sir, but I... Then step aside. No, sir. What? I... I cannot shut my eyes to murder anymore. Before I let you harm an innocent beast and Mr. Barricard, who cannot defend himself, I'll raise the countryside. Why, you... Help! Help! Mr. Tremaine, help! Just go! I lay unconscious till the shot awoke me. And yet, somehow, I seemed to step out of myself be a witness of all the things which could not have happened and yet did. I could see Mr. Bishop stop at the bottom of the stairs, staring in incredulous disbelief as Mr. Bow, whiskey, tugging at his nightshirt and leading him, a man paralyzed and unable even to stand across the upper landing and through the door to the squire's room. And then, somehow, as if picked up by the wind, I was behind Mr. Bishop as he raced up the stairs, taking out the gun. I was watching the drama in the squire's old bedroom. Mr. Bow had unscrewed one of the big knobs of the four-poster bed and drawn from a hollow place there a document which he was reading while Whiskey lay on the bed as he often did with the old master watching him and licking his lips. What... what do you have there, Bo? Something Whiskey led me to. The real will, Bishop. What do you mean, the real will? One that our father had drawn and validated before we ever came home. And would you like to know who the real heir was? Whiskey there, with Chadsworth named as his god. Yeah. That would never hold up in a court. Oh, wouldn't it? I wonder. Chadsworth didn't really see Father sign your will, and I doubt if he'd support you once he knew Father's real wishes. He knows just as well as the squire did we're neither of us worth a damn. It doesn't matter. It's all beside the point. Because that one's going to be destroyed. Give it to me. Oh, no, Bishop. A little late, but this is one wish I can grant my father. Give it to me, Triple, or I'll take it from you. Try it. I'll have it. If I have to put a bullet through you, hand it over or I'll shoot. I, I, my wrist! We, stop! Oh! Oh, no. Whiskey made me shoot. Myself. I... Ah... Uh, I never thought it would be like this. Before my time, you took me. Now I take you in the same way. Father. No. Father Bo is no better. He'd have sold the house from under you just as soon as I would. Why didn't you take him to tell him, Bo? He didn't have to. You see, I'm already dead. As I said, the shot brought me awake. But by the time I got to the room, it was empty, save for Mr. Bishop lying dead on the floor with a bullet through his heart and the will, the real will, in his hand. Shocking thing, really, shocking. Bishop, you, you think, actually committed suicide because he murdered his father? That's the way it would appear, sir. Well, and there's absolutely no question about this will being valid. <laughs> You'll be a rich man, Chadsworth. 
It's all been a few years past now, and we're both a bit grayer and a little nearer the end of it all. But they've been pleasant enough years for all the sad memories. Whiskey and me sitting here by the fire of a night. My look across at him in the squire's wing chair. And I wonder if it's a trick of my old eyes. But moment by moment, day by day, year by year, that long hound's face with the jowls and the sad, wise old eyes grows more and more like the master. Till when the fire burns low and the candles wane, I could swear he sits there and nods at me and winks and says, <laughs> Not the best way to end, perhaps, Chad. But at least there's been the satisfaction of knowing that <laughs> the old dog had his day, after all. <laughs> a man and his dog live together long enough, and uh, you believe my fantasy that I stated in the beginning, do you suppose a man and his dog could change ends of the leash and no one would notice the difference? I'll be back shortly. some old records, I found that a Thomas Chadsworth, the last resident of Ropesby Hall, lived to be 93. There's no mention of how many years Whiskey lived, but there is a note to the effect that the day the old man died, his dog, an old gray speckled hound, went to his long last sleep as if in sympathy. I wonder if they're buried in the garden beside the squire and his wife. Our cast included Court Benson, Russell Horton, Morgan Fairchild, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.